Hey, what's up, my tribe? This is Balrogs. In this Elden Ring video, I will show you my insane madness build. This is a build for NG+, but also possible for endgame with a few modifications. Its raw power amazed me when I was creating it and playing it, so I hope you get to experience it too. This is madness! So let's talk about how this build works. It's a frenzied madness faith build focused on the use of dual wielding attacks mixed with frenzied flame incantations. I have always liked dual wielding weapons in Elden Ring, so this was a good opportunity to play like that again. But in PvE, unfortunately, there are very few enemies that you can apply the madness status effect in comparison to PvP, but still you can do a great amount of damage via your weapons or the madness incantations that can melt pretty fast and fill out your madness meter quite quickly. And this is what you want, or at least try to do, because if you get the madness status effect on you, your total damage you make will increase. I'll let you know how when I talk about the armor later in the video. The weapon that I'm dual wielding is no other than Bike's War Spear. It has physical and fire damage, and at max level has a madness buildup of 65 and scales better with faith. It has a very mixed attack moveset with good reach like a dual standing or crouching poke, a powerful jump attack, a crazy running attack that hits multiple times, and a big swipe attack. The damage of this great spear is not superb, but what makes it unique is the weapon art called Frenzy Flame Thrust that imbues the spear with flame of frenzy and does a cool forward jump attack, exploding on the ground, dealing with stance damage and inflicting madness to you and the enemy. It's a very good damage dealer, but can leave you open for an attack from a fast enemy. And what I really liked was the jump attack that made a lot of damage, staggering the enemy. This weapon can be found early game when defeating the invader festering fingerprint bike in the northeast part of Leona of the Lakes on your way to the Church of Innovation. To get a second Vikes War Spear, have a friend drop it for you or just play NG+. The other offensive part of this build is the Frenzy Flame incantations that will get boosted with the Frenzy Flame seal by 20%, and running with two like I'm doing in this build will double the effect by 40%. Very useful when fighting bosses or tough enemies to melt them down quickly. Like I said earlier, if you end up filling the madness meter, you can do an additional 10% damage if you use the Black Dumpling Helmet. If you're new here to the channel, you should know that Fashion Souls always takes priority, even if I don't make it to the 51 poise number. The armor set that I picked for this build is no other than the fingerprint armor set, composed of the helm, armor, gauntlets, and greaves. To really play it as a bike that got consumed by the Flame of Frenzy on its quest to the throne of the Unknown Lord. It can be obtained when you defeat Roundtable Night Vike inside the Lord's Contenders Everjail in Mountain Top of the Giants. If you want to get the Black Dumpling Helmet for that 10% increased damage when you get Madness, it can be farmed from the first generation of Arcs that are in Volcano Manor and in the lower part of Langdale Royal Capital. The last one was where I farm it. Like I said earlier, this is an NG Plus build, but you can still create a mid to late game version of it with less items and will have less damage from the incantations because you won't have the two Frenzy Flame Seals. But don't worry, it is still viable with only one by War Spear. Or if you still want a dual wheel, you can use a Tree Spear or a Lance but you will have to invest a little bit more on strength. Or you can run with one Vike War Spear and one Frenzied Flame Seal in the offhand. That way you can still do weapon attacks, Frenzy Flame Thrust, and cast the Madness Incantations quickly. For Talisman, I'm using the Fire Scorpion Charm that will increase the fire damage you inflict by 12%. That's including the fire damage of the Vike War Spear, the damage of Frenzy Flame Thrust, and all of the fire damage that the Frenzy Flame Incantation does. Next, it's a Phlox Canvas Talisman that will increase the potency of incantations by 8%. Next is the Shard of Alexander that will increase the attack power of the Frenzy Flame Thrust skill by 15%. And last is the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman that will reduce the physical damage taken by 20%. And it will help you if you're running with the Fire Scorpion Charm that increases the physical damage taken. There are a couple of talismans that you can change in this build depending on your playstyle or the circumstance. For example, you can change the Dragon Crest Great Shield for Godfrey Icon if you like to use your sniper incantation constantly, dealing more damage, 
or use the Ritual Sword Talisman for a bump in overall damage when your HP is at maximum. Really, it's up to you how you want to play it. The Frenzy Flame Incantations bring a lot of options to your repertoire of attacks, with great damage, I might add, that if you want to, you can make a full build revolving around incantations, but I wanted to mix weapon attacks with the incantation. So first we got the sniper incantation called Frenzy Burst that will make you launch a blast of flame of frenzy from your eyes from a great distance and great damage to kill enemies from afar or chip away health from enemies that are walking slowly towards you. If you charge this incantation, it will even deal more damage. Next is what I like to call the shotgun incantation that is the flame of frenzy that will generate a burst of Flame of Frenzy from your eyes in a frontal area that can help with swarms or even bosses, but frankly, I don't use it as much. What I use is the Unendurable Frenzy that will make you emit violent bursts of Flame of Frenzy from your eyes, lasting until you ran out of FP or your madness meter fills up. It covers a great area and each projectile shoots like a random fashion, but you can direct the burst with the free camera moving where the enemy is. This incantation does an additional attack when the madness is not triggered when the spell ends, bursting projectiles in a 360 degree area around the player. This is the incantation that I use with bosses and big enemies. Just get closer and pop that baby, hoping that you do the additional attack and also get madness to proc that additional attack power from the Black Dumpling Helmet. This incantation against fast enemies sometimes is a problem due to the slow casting and the recovery time. For the buff, I use Golden Bow as the aura buff and Flame Grammy Strength as the body buff, but you can swap the latter for Howl of Shamburi that will help with the madness meter and will increase by 25% your damage, but will make you take a whopping 30% damage. If you decide to do the Howl of Shaburi, be sure to always use Golden Bow or a Commander Standard if you can manage not to get you know, the heavy load with it to mitigate the damage taken. For the Physique class, I'm using Flame Shrouding Crack Tier that will increase fire attacks by 20% for 3 minutes and stacks with Fire Scorpion Charm, and the Opaline Heart Tier that will increase damage negation types by 15%. If you plan to use the Hall of Verity buff, this can lower the negative impact on damage taken. But if you want to go all out when starting engaging a boss, you can exchange it with the Cerulean Hidden tier to have zero FP consumption when using Undurable Frenzy, for example. This build is a Faith build with points in Dexterity as well to increase the incantations and weapon damage. The class I recommend using if you are creating this build from scratch is one with faith, like the Prophet or the Confessor. For the showcase, I'm using a Respect Vagabond, so points might differ from you. On my level 200 character, I got the points distributed like this. Vigor at 60, Mind at 30, Endurance at 27, Strength at 16, just to meet the requirements of the bike's Warp Spear. Dexterity at 50, Intelligence at 9, no points here. Faith at 80 to get to the last soft cap for attack rating and also incantation scaling. Arcane at 7, no points here. So the final thought for this build is that it took me by surprise. I didn't know how much raw damage it could produce. I had a great time melting enemies and bosses quickly with the incantations or if I wanted to have fun with a combination of incantations and weapon attacks. Now, this NG Plus build can easily transform in a late game one with the gear modifications I mentioned in the video. So if you want to try it out, you can do it before jumping into your next playthrough. It was great to be able to do a wheel once more and having a good repertoire of attack with the two great spears. The only con that I see on this build was to fight a fire immune enemy because the incantation wouldn't be as powerful and your only option is the physical damage with the great spear. So be patient and take your time. And also with uh, the use of incantation with fast enemies, like because the recovery time of the incantations or the cast time is too slow, so you're open to, to get an attack. But the rest of the enemies are already doomed. So go and have fun with this build. So guys, if you run a similar build, let me know down in the comments below. If you want to support the channel, please give this video a like. That will mean a lot to me and will help the channel grow. And if you're new, please consider subscribing if you'd like to check out more Elden Ring content. 
And if you really want to go beyond that, you can become a member to take advantage of some cool perks. But that is completely optional and I will appreciate you either way. So thank you so much if you watch up to here. Uh, be sure to check more faith videos in my Ellenry Faith Build playlist. They are still powerful to this day. And as always, take care, be safe, and see you on the next one. Ciao!